I'm in Dave's garage. Whoa. What was the USB card of death and how many people died? So should I should I further the conspiracy or should I debunk the conspiracy? I could try either way. I hit that in grade nine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that kind of person. And I had a massive Big, pile massive, of cables. Yeah. Just, I've got no buffer. I've got nothing. I got in the queue. nothing. Like it's all I, going live tonight. I, um, Windows Pinball has turned into something of a conspiracy theory with people with videos out there promoting the idea that perhaps they suppressed the 64-bit versions or they were hidden from the world. Um, what was the deal with 64-bit pinball and why did it not ship? And why yeah. did pinball get removed from the product ultimately? Yeah, pinball, the great pinball conspiracy. So should I should I further the conspiracy or should I debunk the conspiracy? I could try either way. We'll record like, both. How's I'm, that? Like I'm being recorded. This is going to go up on YouTube. Like I could just decide to like go rogue and go full <laughs> conspiracy. And then everybody is going to like say, oh my goodness, it's, it's actually a conspiracy. I saw it on YouTube. Like here's my chance to spread disinformation. You could go that way. But I'm not going to. Okay. I thought about it though. <laughs> See, this is what happens. I come here and then I get crazy ideas. I'm like, I could totally pull one over on everybody, but I'm not, I'm not that kind of person. When the Windows, the 64-bit Windows project was getting off the ground, um, these were or the original target of 64-bit Windows was the Itanium processor, which uh, I saw a news article recently. That Linux finally dropped support for the Itanium, like, like 15 years after Intel stopped making them. Right. Um, and I'm sure all like 50 people who still own Itaniums are very sad. Um, but uh, so, but at the time, Intel still believed in Itanium, and it was the it was their first 64-bit processor, and the Windows was being ported to it, and the the kernel was finally ported enough that you could boot to a command prompt, and they said. This is great. We can now boot Windows to a command prompt. It would be really nice if the GUI worked. So they asked me and a couple other people to go off and port the shell to 64 64 bit code. So we like sat down and spent I don't know a few weeks, something like that, uh, just doing this massive port, porting, porting thousands of files. You know, getting them to trying to get them to build see all the compiler errors, fix all the compiler errors, and eventually it's like, oh, we finally have a binary, and we put it on a machine and see if it runs. And uh, the story of Pinball was that, yes, I successfully got Pinball to build and run 64-bit. However, you couldn't play the game because when you hit the plunger to launch the ball, the ball would come into the chute and then just fall out the bottom of the out the bottom of the table because something was went wrong with the collision detection. So the ball would just pass through all the walls. It would pass through the plunger. It would just fall out the bottom of the table. And I we didn't have time to like go through and actually like debug why collision detection was not working. We still had another, you know, 90,000 file, 90,000 files to port or however many files it is. Like we still hadn't done solitaire. Like we still have to deport solitaire. I can't spend all my time on pinball. Um, so yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe, <laughs> maybe pinball was more important, but we just, I just, we just made the decision is like, okay, our goal is to port as much as we can. And if we spend four days trying to figure out why pinball is not working, that's going to cut into a lot of our time budget. So we just set pinball aside and, and ported as much as we could. And we never had time to get back to pinball. So we just made the executive decision right there is that, well, the Itanium's target is high-end server systems. You probably aren't going to be playing pinball on the server in your data center. So if we took pinball out of the project, like, the intended target audience wouldn't really care. Um, in fact, they would probably be thankful that pinball wasn't on the machine because it meant that you you spent forty thousand dollars on this big honking machine, and you you don't want the people in the data center playing pinball all day on it. Um, so we we just made the call. It's like okay, we'll just take pinball out of the product, uh, and so that's why pinball, as far as I knew, was not in Windows uh, sixty four bit edition. 
But then some enterprising people found like beta copies and other things and found that Pinball was back. And so then they're like, hey, you lied to me. Pinball's back. What happened? And the answer is, I don't know what happened. <laughs> the, when I left the story, they're like, it was, it was like that when I left it. Uh, Pinball was not in the product when I handed the port of the shell, like we got Explorer and everything all working. When I handed the port of Explorer back to uh, the 64-bit team, uh, and I, like I didn't hear back from the, it's like presumably somebody figured out what was wrong with Pinball. And looking at some of the some of the research that other people have done, I'm thinking it was a floating point rounding issue. Um, uh, so it could be that there was like a problem in the C runtimes that they found where floating point rounding was not working quite right because the a the Alpha AXP did have a more complicated floating point system than the than the Intel math coprocessor. Like the Intel math coprocessor has an 80 bit intermediate floating point, which can mask a whole bunch of uh, calculation errors because you're calculating your you're extending your intermediate calculations from 64-bit to 80-bit. So this gives you a little more uh, more precision or accuracy, one of those words. Gives you more stuff, gives you more mantissa. Um, but the alpha, I think the alpha had like three different floating point formats. And you had to like pick it. It's like, oh, am I going to use floating point F or G or something? And I guess the, the way the math worked out, just some of the rounding went the wrong way and collision didn't work. Um, but I guess... Did it work? The, equally across all the CPUs or was it particular CPUs had an issue? Like, was it Intel versus AXP versus Itanium or was it all 64-bit? It's interesting. So we only had two 64-bit processors available. One was the Itanium. And at the time, it, we didn't even have physical Itanium hardware. It ran only in simulation. So you could turn on your Itanium simulator and boot windows and a couple hours later it might finish booting and so this was not practical like right. you can't play pinball on a machine that runs at 0.1 percent of full speed um and so what we did was we took all of our old alpha axps because microsoft had already retired alpha axp as a windows target um and but there were still all these alpha axps still you know sitting in developers offices like doing nothing and so they're like, hey, guys, we found something to do with your Alpha AXPs. And so the kernel team actually ported Windows to the Alpha AXP and said, guess what? We have Windows running on a 64-bit processor. It's not the one we plan on shipping with, but that one's not ready yet. So why don't we port to this guy first? And the expectation was that most of the porting problems were independent of the specific CPU it was, that most of the porting problems would just be in getting any 64-bit version working at all. Okay. Uh, and so all of our actual testing and validation at this stage was done on Alpha AXP because that was the only 64-bit processor that actually existed. So yes, we had this collision detection problem on Alpha AXP. We had no idea if we had this collision problem on Itaniums because Itaniums didn't exist. The physical hardware didn't exist yet. Okay. Um, but my guess is that other testing, maybe like running some mathematical tests or something, they identified some sort of rounding problem and fixed it in the C runtimes, and then that magically made pinball work again. That's my guess as to what happened. It could be that somebody sat down and spent a weekend trying to figure out what was wrong with pinball. It's like this person really, really wanted pinball to work on his data center machine. Uh, I do not know what happened. But uh, at any rate, somehow pinball started working again, and they put it back in the product. This happened without my knowing. So when I told the story, pinball wasn't there when I when I was when I handed 64-bit Windows uh, back to the back to the kernel team. So, so, so.